and welcome back everybody we are here for the third match of world cup of pokemon vgc hosted by none other than victory road i myself am Costadai dimos and i am joined by the lovely mave mave how are we doing third match the second one was quite intense between enosh and alexandra there as well i'm pretty bummed to not have the cat here so that was a bit of a heartbreak for me uh you know, it's yeah. tough. You know, we, you and I need that middleman our very first time casting together, but we will figure it out with Gimli or no. I am we very will. excited for this match. I know this match is very close to your heart because it is yeah. Greece. So I know Greece, you know, you are, uh, you're very invested, I think, in the outcome of this match. And Greece is playing France. So uh, both yeah. of these teams are very good. France is some, you know, is one of those teams that you always have to watch out for when the pools are drawn. And I know we have some really interesting teams today from the Greece side as well. We definitely do. So we'll just go ahead, roll the website right now to check it out. What the current stand is between Greece and France. Uh, currently, France is winning four to three versus Greece. As um, uh, this is essentially the last match, which will decide whether France have gone ahead, confirmed the win, or if Greece have been able to bring back the tie. So, ladies and gents, this is quite an important match for both of these teams, as uh, because of week one scores where France uh, were lost 7-1 to Chile. It is quite detrimental. France needs this win so they can try to get that position in and keep the World Cup dreams still alive, as if they even get... If they lose, for example, they would have been completely out. With a draw, it still is very, very tough from them, as we do see quite a few interesting teams coming out from both sides here as well. Yeah, I see the Shedinja first on the French side, and that immediately hurts my feelings. Uh, just because I have played a lot of locals who would bring yeah. Shedinja, and our locals were all based on counter-teaming Shedinja at events. Uh, mm -hmm. Something that I do love here, a couple of Latias on Greece's side, which are great, Milotic, which is one of my favorite Pokemon here. And then even uh, the Gyarados on the uh, French side. So yeah. I just, I think a lot of really creative team building for both of these teams. Um, I see a straight column of Incineroar on both sides, though, so we will see if there is a full column, if we hit the full bingo of Incineroar mm -hmm. on both sides here. Um, but I do, I love both of the, both of the team uh, compositions that we're seeing. Oh, definitely. And uh, I'm going to give a shout out to Pastalis as well with his little Zygarde there hidden in the back. Uh, love to see it as well being brought as a very underrated, um, restricted in this current format. But of course, we are going to go ahead and get into the match itself. It is going to be seen from Lazarus, Lazaropoulos' um, side of the field. Uh, Lazarus, I know him. He's a very good friend of mine. He is a amazing team builder. He uh, honestly, he's the one of the focal points of the Greek side as uh, he's a great battler as well bringing the uh, Eternatus, Incineral, Rillaboom, uh, Suicune, Landorus, Incarnate and that Ditto Maeve. And I love Ditto in restricted formats. I think Ditto is such a great counter team mon to especially Pokemon like Xerneas. If you can bait them into getting that Geomancy up and mm -hmm. then bring in your Ditto in front of a boosted Xerneas, you're in an amazing position, especially if you're running something like that Choice Scarf where you know you're going to be faster. Uh, yeah. Eternatus is a Pokemon that obviously starting to pick up a lot more in popularity. It typically runs that power herb for a move like that Meteor Beam. Very mm -hmm. strong with really nice typing as well. Uh, and then we also see the double fake out options with Incineroar and Rillaboom. Landorus Incarnate's been picking up a lot of speed. And then the Suicune, like you said, pre-broadcast, repping the mascot here for Greece, which I love. Oh, definitely, definitely. As we're going to be going ahead and checking out uh, Lazarus's opponent for today, which is going to be Florian Henry um, uh, rocking with the uh, Venudon, essentially. So Venusaur, Groudon, Incineroar, Nihiligo, Regieleki, and Celestila. I really do like the team composition that Florian has been able to bring here. I, in my opinion, it looks like it has a lot of checks for the current meta. You see Nihiligo, Celestila, um essentially try to cover some options where you've got Celestila uh, coming back to its previous glory of, uh, I would assume, <laughs> uh, the um, very stally kind of Celestila leftovers. You've got wide guard access as well. If you want, you can even equip it with heavy slam, not even put a lot of investment in it, and it deals so much damage. Yeah, Celestila is doing what Celestila did best back in 2017. Uh, it got all that lovely boost from the Dynamax. It was a really offensive Pokemon in Dynamax formats. You know, mm -hmm. when it was able to get that Dynamax, get off those uh, 
max steel spikes and you know boost the defenses on its side of the field but instead now it's back to being very stally you know getting mm -hmm. those leech seeds becoming a real problem towards an end game if you don't have a good way to handle it uh mm -hmm. it can be a real problematic pokemon to deal with but i do love of course venadon is really tried and true with that venusaur and that groudon getting yep. that sun getting that sleep and there is no kyogre on the other side of the field so you're not gonna have to worry too much about that rain well, exactly. So the weather war has essentially already be won, uh, been won from Florian's side of the field. You see that Florian does have a lot of experience coming into this from real life events as well. Top eights in uh, uh, regionals, as well as uh, a top cut in the national championships too, however, from 2015 onwards. So I'm looking uh, forward to seeing how this matchup does pan out as we are going to be seeing it from the perspective of Lazarus. Yeah, I do love, again, I love this Eternatus. I think it's very fun for a team. You know, yeah. it's not going to love going down against a Celesteela. You know, that poison typing is not great, but that Meteor Beam is still very helpful against a lot of the Pokemon on mm -hmm. the opponent's side of the field. Landorus is great. Ditto, I think, could be so, so useful here in a couple of different ways. If you are, if you come in, if you've got that Celesteela on the opponent's side of the field and you just want your own wall for yourself, it yeah. uh, could be a really interesting way to go about it as well. Um, and I think the Rillaboom here is going to be in a really interesting position too, if it can get some big damage off onto mm -hmm. that Groudon, if it is brought in the first place, you know, if it can get big damage off into the Groudon without uh, taking something like a Heat Crash. Yeah, because essentially the Rillaboom right now, it's in a bit of an awkward position as there are a lot of things that it doesn't want to try to stack up and go up against. It also depends on if the Rillaboom does, of course, have access to uh, knockoff, as uh, we do see commonly used with Assault Vest variants uh, of that Pokemon. I think right now there's a lot of situations where um florian has options and answers to for example the eternatus you do know that of course the groudon does highly threaten it we see that the eternatus isn't exactly a black sludge set right now maybe with cosmic pa power as uh, power herb is the chosen item for it it will be trying to go get in really good position and maybe get a meteor beam off if it can deal so much damage yeah, that Meteor Beam is one of those great new moves. It is tough being a two-turn move, but we will see the Venusaur Groudon lead a very tried and true lead here, and the Suicune and Incineroar lead from Lazarus' side, which I absolutely love. Uh, both of these Pokemon, you know, Suicune's not going to be loving the, uh, the bright sun here, and yeah. maybe some sort of Grass-type move from this Venusaur, but having that fake-out pressure from the Incineroar and the Intimidate out onto that Groudon is huge. Well, exactly that. So right now, Bradon's damage output has been reduced. As uh, it, I do honestly think that it's still in a good position to try to go and maybe try to land the Precipice Blades here. It will still deal a uh, two-hit KO onto Incineroar, deal a lot of damage onto the Suicune too. But like you said, Maeve, the Venusaur is a threat. It needs to get shut down as we do see the Incineroar going just for that and flinching it with a fake out. Yeah, the Precipice Blades, though, from the Groudon. Incineroar gets the miss, Ooh. though. Only going to oh be hitting God. that Suicune slot for this, and Suicune very comfortably takes that, especially mm. after one Intimidate. The Life Orb also we see on the Groudon. Suicune goes for a Tailwind as well, boosting the speed, trying to get faster than that Venusaur with that Chlorophyll boost in the sun. And that Incineroar did exactly what it needed to do and got a little bit lucky. It really did. So Incineroar <laughs> able to get away from that very close call there. Uh, it will be in a situation now, of course, it will be faster than the Groudon, most likely. The Venusaur might still be outspeeding both Suicune and um, the Incineroar here, so it may be free to just maybe uh, perhaps get a, a Sleep Powder off if it does connect. Try to slow down Lazarus's momentum, as Lazarus right now, he doesn't have highly threatening Pokemon. Sure, the Incineroar does highly threaten the Venusaur here, but it is, of course, uh, open to maybe getting put to sleep whilst Groudon can switch out maybe try to reset the intimidate drop on its attack but in this situation it may just want to go for the damage as Venusaur goes for Leaf Storm yeah that Leaf Storm is enough to knock out that Suicune after that very small amount of Precipice Blades damage drops the special attack though on that Venusaur so another one of those won't be nearly as powerful but gets rid of that pesky Tailwind user Flare Blitz though is going to activate the Aka Berry on that Venusaur that Venusaur is not going to be taking as much damage from this fire type attack but it is almost enough to knock out which is a huge amount of damage here and we know that that Venusaur is not going to be super comfortable Groudon goes for that Heat Crash though in the sun into a fire type Pokemon gets Incineroar down to under half of its HP gets a little bit more life uh, life orb damage chip onto Groudon mm -hmm. and then Incineroar eats that berry that citrus berry and gains a bunch of that HP back almost like nothing even happened 
That is such a huge turn right there. You saw that the Venusaur was able to just survive on a sliver of HP there, thanks to the Otterberry, which we don't commonly see on a Venusaur. Focus Sash and maybe even an Expert Belt normally preferred over onto it because it no longer has access to its G Max form. As we see Lazarus bringing the uh, land, uh, sorry, we see Lazarus bringing the uh, Landorus incarnate um, onto the field. It will be able to outspeed this Venusaur, having the Tailwind up, maybe try to go for a rock slide if it has access to it but uh, i do think that that's quite important that uh, the suikun did go down there to a leaf storm as um there wasn't any sort of uh, switch potential from lazarus he didn't actually opt to go for a switch out maybe predict anything uh in this scenario i do feel like he needs to try to get as much advantage and momentum out up against yeah. florian's pokemon as in this situation venusaur may even go for that sleep out if it does carry it yeah, and that Venusaur with a sleep powder could be really oppressive onto something like this Tornadus that isn't going to be able to get hit by a Precipice Blades and would only get hit by a Heat Crash. Not going to matter though, Gradon switches out here for Florian, brings in his own Incineroar to get that Intimidate down onto the opposing Incineroar. Not going to do a whole lot to this Landorus Incarnate because it's this Incarnate form runs special typically, but it is mm -hmm. most importantly going to get that Fake Out pressure onto either of these Pokemon. Landorus goes for an Earth Power though Ooh. into the Incineroar slot, does a massive amount of damage here. That Venusaur, though, gets the Sleep Powder, but the Incineroar avoids it and goes for that parting shot. I think this thing is wearing, is holding Bright Dust or something, because it has avoided everything. Gets that parting shot off, swaps back to Lazarus, and Lazarus is going to be able to bring out whatever his last Pokemon is, which we can see from behind the screen, is that Eternatus. Yeah, so definitely the Incineroar rocking a Bright Powder, perhaps, but um, uh, of course, in this scenario, like uh, we did mention, Maeve, the Tailwind pressure is on the side of the field of Lazarus, but then again, Florian does have that access to the Fake Out pressure right now as well. So uh, even if Florian's Pokemon are still at low HP uh, right now over on his side, uh, he's still in a good situation to try to maybe shut something down from Lazarus' side, either up to go for the Eternatus there to stop it from getting any sort of uh, boost. Uh, powered by, of course, Meteor Beam, or up to go for the Landorus here. So he's going to have to try to take his pick here, as Tailwind Pressure is still on the side of Lazarus, and he needs to try to wait it out to exert as much pressure and regain complete momentum on his side of the field. Yeah, this fake out here is going to be really detrimental. You know, you could go for some protects here just to bait it out. Incineroar, though, not worrying about a protect, just goes for a fake out into the Landorus slot. Eternatus Ooh. goes for a flamethrower. They should pretty comfortably knock out this Venusaur, which had very little HP left from that Akaberry holding it on earlier. And uh, now, you know, that Venusaur, with that Akaberry, it was really lucky because it wanted to get that uh, Sleep Powder off, but it didn't work. But the Tailwind Peter's out this turn, so now Lazarus is back at neutral standing in terms of speed. The Nihiligo comes out for Florian as well in replacement. So no way to put Tailwind back up either. Yeah, I do really like Florian bringing in the Nihiligo here. Um, it does have options to outspeeding the Landorus, maybe get a Meteor Beam uh, one-hit KO onto it as well. And uh, over on the Incineral side uh, for Florian, maybe try to get a parting shot off onto the Eternatus. Uh, in this situation, Eternatus does outspeed, so he does have to be very cautious of any sort of KO that this Eternatus can pick up on. Sure, the Tailwind is now over, but uh, the situation does stand that... Uh, it the, of course, the Eternatus can have access to Earth Power of its own, or it could try to go just for damage and go for the Meteor Beam uh, to try to inflict any sort of damage it can over on Florian's side. Yeah, Eternatus goes for that Meteor Beam power up by that Power Herb, only going to be a one turn attack. Once again, this move can actually miss for a two turn move, so you really just have to hope that you don't have that problem here with this Power Herb. And it does not look like, yep, it does actually meet its mark. It's something I always worry about with those weird accuracy moves. Only doing about half damage to this Nihiligo, though, who then goes for its own Meteor Beam. And into either of these Pokemon, it's going to be a massive amount of damage. Nihiligo, one of those really strong special attackers. And it very comfortably took that Meteor Beam. So we're going to have to see exactly how much damage it does in return. Landers avoided the attack, though. I spoke it into existence. The Earth Power here onto the Nihiligo is enough to knock it out. That is amazing right there. You know exactly how detrimental that can be. The parting shot from the Incineroar into the Eternatus as well. Gonna send that Incineroar back at another Intimidate, get another fake out. 
Yeah, Florian being unbelievably unlucky in this game one right now. Uh, all of the potential of uh, moves missing have pretty much been occurring for him, so it has been really slowing down his momentum. Lazarus, on the other hand, has been able to... Uh, you know, completely capitalize off of this misfortunes of RNG on Florian's side. You see the Groudon coming in right now. It was uh, unfortunately coming in where it wasn't able to set up the sun for itself. But then again, it just wants to try to get off as much damage as it can. Maybe try to get rid of that Eternatus. Um, it is unfortunate due to it not having the sun now currently on the field. It means that it might not be able to pick up a one hit KO onto that Landorus and Carnite. But then again, in the situation that we are in at the moment, um, Florian I don't think has enough resources to try to bring this back because Lazarus does have, of course, um, the Landorus and Eternatus uh, being on the field. They outspeed both of Florian's Pokemon as well. Yeah, I do feel like I spoke that into existence a little bit and feel kind of bad, but the Eternatus here going for Protect, not wanting to get faked yeah. out. Landorus also going for Protect here. Very safe play here from Lazarus, mm -hmm. knowing that if you just time out that fake out, Florian, you know, it just waste an extra turn but if he went for something like a sword stance here which he didn't there is no mm. sword stance which would have been a great way to capitalize on that turn if you were going for that double uh, double protect yeah definitely and um just wanting to try to play a bit safe there you don't want to get caught out by any sort of play due to the fake out flinch uh, potential from florian side so in this scenario, it's just going to be about landing your hits, making sure you uh, click in um, the correct moves to try to go and land onto both the Groudon and Incineroar, as they are very free and open to uh, just getting KO'd at this point. Unfortunate for Florian, with the momentum that he could have gained from the moves that he had tried to go for, and unfortunately, of course, RNG uh, said, had another word, had another thought about it, but in this scenario, I do think it may be over, as we do see the Eternatus go for the Flamethrower onto Groudon. Yeah, it does a, just about a quarter of its HP. Landorus goes for the Earth Power, that double target here, just to ensure that that Groudon actually does faint. Not able to get off another Precipice Blades. So this is a a very low sliver of health here. It mm -hmm. goes for a Flare Blitz. This recoil will knock this Incineroar out, though. Yeah. So it will not be able to survive. It does get the burn. One last little bit of luck there <laughs> for Florian that he was sorely missing the last bit of this game. I think, you know, uh, RNG watched our last match, me and Lou did, and said, oh, hmm, every single move hit? All right, why don't we make sure none of them hit in your <laughs> next set? <laughs> that Meteor Beam miss is a move. It's, it's you know, it's very accurate, but having mm -hmm. a very small amount, like a very small chance to miss is so scary. It makes it, all, you know, it makes it one of those moves that, you know, once you get it, it's almost like running a Z move when you get that power herb and you can use it right away and you don't want to, yep. you know, it's you can't use it again. More like Geomancy, I guess. But um, it's but, very detrimental to lose that Meteor Beam and that power herb and not getting to use it. Oh, yeah, because you're just missing from so much damage output that you could be capitalizing off of. So, for example, the Nihiligo there would have definitely picked up a KO onto the Landorus Incarnate. There's a bit of chip damage dealt onto it. And in that scenario, you want to capitalize. You have Stab Boost, you have the plus one, you are a Nihiligo that outspeeds the Landorus Incarnate, and it could absolutely change things for Florian's side. Very unfortunate there. That is the kind of risk-reward play in comparison to, let's say, a Geomancy, like you mentioned, Maeve, which is a tiny bit more safer as long as you don't get roared out on that same turn but um in this scenario that tiny bit of accuracy just paying so much unfortunate dividends towards um florian's uh, play style there as lazarus is 1-0 right now does have the advantage and uh, will have to be in my opinion a tiny bit cautious of that venusaur as uh, if florian's able to land a sleep powder he could, could completely gain momentum from that and try to capitalize off of it because I don't see anything in Lazarus's arsenal right now, maybe other than a ditto, that could try to stop that sleep powder play going other than just fake out pressures. Yeah, and that was absolutely my thought as well. You got He got very lucky with that Venusaur not able to get a sleep powder off, but you have to still respect it. You know, you know yeah. that it's carrying that move. You know, you can only survive on that uh, on that good luck just as, you know, for so long until it comes back and bites you. Yeah. Uh, and that sleep powder, you know, typically a move that, you know, we see it miss a lot, but we don't see it miss that much. So you know you have to be respectful of it coming out. Groudon Venusaur lead again here, though, from Florian. Incineroar and Rillaboom instead here from Lazarus. So not bringing that Suicune, no Tailwind this mm. turn, but you do get that grassy terrain and that priority. 
I very much prefer Lazarus's lead right now as uh, of course you do have fake out pressure more importantly you do have the intimidate drop onto the Groudon just like before but you have that Rillaboom so Rillaboom instead of Suicune here it's not threatened by one hit KO if of course it is that assault vest variant there's no sort of damage mitigation dealt onto this Rillaboom as well as it's very free to just try to go for damage on its own. It depends on what move it might try to opt for, whether it has wood hammer access, maybe a drum beating, which might be a bit more tactical for the sake of dropping a bit of damage that you could be dealing and get the speed drop onto any sort of switch in or just the crowd on. But in this scenario, um, I think Florian, I do still respect this lead because there's a lot of potential he could try to go for try to maybe for just click the precipice bu blades button hope it does connect and land this time round and maybe try to go for some offensive pressure with the venusaur as it won't be able to move due to being flinched yeah the ground on though going for the heat crash in the sun probably into this uh rillaboom slot which is a very comfortable one hit oh. knockout this rillaboom not able to go for something like a wood hammer or a grass type move so you made that 50 50 choice by faking out that venusaur not falling asleep but then losing your rillaboom right in the very beginning no, oh, and that is so unfortunate for Lazarus, but well played from Florian because of the fact that the Groudon is life orb. It can still, uh, still go ahead and absolutely get the KO onto the Rillaboom. It is a count uh, situation right there. So Florian knowing his team quite well, they're saying, okay, sure, you could try to flinch my Venusaur there, but what are you going to do about my Groudon if I just try to direct the pressure onto the Rillaboom? I've got rid of it. There's no additional fake out pressure right now on the field that Lazarus can try to bring in and maybe recycle pivot away as he is going to be bringing the Landris incarnate here it is still threatened by a sleep powder or maybe even a raw leaf storm one hit KO as the grass train is on the field yeah this is a really nice uh setup here for Florian after the first turn uh very much changing the momentum the way that he wanted it to go the first game getting that big damage off from the ground on that ground on in the sun with that life orb like we saw does an absolutely massive amount of damage this Venusaur too very comfortable to go for something here mm -hmm. because it's the fastest thing on the field Landers instead goes for a protect isn't going to want to take any sleep powder damage or a leaf storm here it, you do see the sleep powder oh, though God. calls the protect possibly but gets it onto that incineroar that incineroar is not going to be able to switch in and fake out until it wakes back up and the heat crash though goes into the torn uh into the landorus not able to get that knockout so a massive sleep there you know you went you targeted both pokemon just to be safe mm -hmm. oh definitely i think i do really like florian's play there because he thought okay i could just try to guarantee a sleep if i can onto the incineroar whilst the landorus is still open to getting so much damage received on its own field even if the groudon is at minus one of its attack it still does so much damage with the heat crash option uh due to the ground uh, due to of course the weight interaction and uh, the base power being increased as groudon's a very very heavy pokemon and in this scenario of course you can just completely capitalize you know that your opponent will be aware that leaf storm being so strong powered by grass terrain is a very big threat onto the landress and he went for the read or he just wanted to play a bit more safe and just slow down the game whilst instilling so much pressure yeah, instead though, the uh, Eternatus swaps in here for that slot and gets that pressure up, trying to maybe lower the Precipice Blades uh, PP that is here, but the Sleep Powder instead right onto the Eternatus, so that Landorus, or that swapped out, gonna be the only Pokemon awake while the Precipice Blades goes into both of these Pokemon here. No misses, so wow. much damage, brings them both into the bottom 25% of their HP, and then that little bit of chip. Uh, Incineroar is gonna be sleepily eating its berry here. That Citrus Berry gets it right back up to just under half of its health, but it can't move, you know, it can't do anything. This is a really dominant position for Florian and shows exactly how important Sleep Powder can be if he had gotten this sleep last game. Well, exactly that, and Lazarus had no switch-ins there. Uh, it's a horrible situation where you're forced to switch in a, a Pokemon that is super effectively weak to ground types when a Groudon is on the field. And yes, it may be at minus one attack, but you saw for yourselves how much damage it just absolutely threatens with because Florian at this point just wants to stay in, slow down the game because they feel like their lead has been sufficient enough to try to go ahead click the buttons that they need to the sleep powders the precipice blades as long as they connect it pushes florian in such an advantageous position as we have seen right there just a completely guaranteeing two hit ko on both the incineral and the eternatus there 
The Incineroar switches out here. Not even going to try for that wake up. Bringing the Landorus back in, especially if there is something like another Precipice Blades here onto both of the Pokemon. Venusaur goes for a Sludge Bomb targeted into the Landorus slot. Hmm. Little hefty check of damage. Not a very effective move, though. The Turnitus stays asleep, and this Groudon goes for, once again, another Precipice Blades. Won't hit that Landorus on that switch in, but it will comfortably take this knockout on the Eternatus. So the Eternatus here swapped in and wasn't able to do much of anything to uh, support Lazarus. Well, yeah, and it's like we said, Florian just trying to go, playing it safe. There's no reason to try to read any sort of switch-ins and go for another Sleep Powder. You just want to guarantee the KOs that the sun is still up. It may be ending uh, very soon, I believe, but unfortunately, Lazarus has not been able to slow down the momentum and advantage of this very threatening Venusaur Groudon combination. As right now, the uh, Incineral does come in. It is asleep, and of course, it does get an Intimidate drop bringing the Groudon down to minus two, but I do feel like this is a situation that Florian definitely has the game, has all of the momentum going for himself. Yeah, and Florian still has all four of his Pokemon as well, so if Florian, you know, does lose that Venusaur this turn to something, you know, even if he goes for a Sleep Powder and it misses, mm -hmm. he's still got multiple Pokemon in the back to help take care of the rest of the Pokemon on Lazarus's side. Lazarus doesn't have any double targeting moves here either, so his Incineroar, if it goes for a fake out, this Landorus can only attack one Pokemon at a time on Florian's side and won't be able to do a whole lot of damage to both. Uh, you know, typically they run Sludge Bomb and uh, Earth Power, but fake out actually goes off because the Incineroar wakes up and the Venusaur Ooh. goes for that Leaf Storm into the Landorus slot. This will very comfortably get that knockout here, drops a yeah. special attack. That means it is Incineroar versus the world. Uh, he is awake now, so he is bright-eyed and bushy-tailed to see exactly what's going to happen, but I don't think it's going to be something that he can come back from. Yeah, I don't think this is a situation Incineroar wants to be in. <laughs> Just, <laughs> it's up against the world right now versus all four of Florian's Pokemon. Uh, we saw just the amount of pressure that this lead uh, produces on Florian's side. Uh, you have the Venusaur taking advantage of the Chlorophyll ability, which means it is uh, got its speed doubled. It is threatening with sleep powders of uh, potential putting your opponents to sleep. Uh, with so much damage output, thanks to the Rillaboom's grass terrain there. So I think Lazarus might be trying to think a bit back on the actual lead of Rillaboom, saying, hmm, maybe it didn't work quite well because I gave so much damage output and slight recovery onto the Venusaur there. And it's not just not the best situation. Uh, Florian was able to just r run away completely with this game two, forcing us to check out a game three. Yeah, and it definitely shows exactly how important accuracy can be for Florian's team. You know, those yep. sleep powders going off was absolutely detrimental for Lazarus. You know, taking two sleep powders here, uh, you know, losing both his Incineroar and his Eternatus. You know, Eternatus, yep. one of those Pokemon that you really want to be able to get some of those strong moves off, but that Groudon is very much in the way as well. Getting those Precipice Blades, uh, being one of those Pokemon that is just completely oppressive once yep. it's fully set up or once it's comfortable with its partner next to it. We didn't even really see any switches there either. I think that was just a very comfortable Venusaur Groudon showcase. It's exactly what that Pokemon can do. Like you said, I don't think the Rillaboom was all that helpful, especially because it wasn't properly protected in the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. I think Suicune can very comfortably handle a lead unless it gets hit with that Leaf Storm, but that Tailwind was very important. It really was because it was al allowing Lazarus to have that momentum to try to push back against, uh, you know, getting slept by a sleep powdering, powdering uh, Venusaur there as, uh, you know, you need to try to shut it down as best as possible. Maybe try to rotate. Um, uh, the Landorus I do like, but then I'm not sure if it's been able to do as much because as we've seen there, um, I think it's mainly used to check uh, the Nihiligo and just deal just in general good damage onto the Incineral too. We saw though in game one it wasn't even able to pick up a KO there, which you would expect it would, uh, which is a bit of an indication of how that Incineral on uh, Florian's side is properly trained. I'm not sure if Ditto has any sort of room here, because I think personally I'd be quite terrified if I had a, a Scarf, um, a Venusaur, or Groudon uh, on my opponent's side of the field, which can threaten either with uh, Sleep Powders all the time, take advantage of Chlorophyll, or even Precipice Blades. Yeah, I think uh, Ditto would be, you know, last, you know, your last chance hope here, but I think he feels more comfortable without it. Venusaur and Ioligo here for the lead, though. No Chlorophyll boost in speed. Incineroar Landorus as the lead as well for Lazarus. So having no Chlorophyll speed here could be really mm. interesting. And having that fake out pressure from the Incineroar on either of these two Pokemon, um, you know, you can still have to deal with that Meteor Beam threat or the threat of 
the sleep powder as well yeah definitely so a bit of a change up of course the Nihilido does still threaten that Landris um, with a one-hit KO I feel most of the time uh, with that meter beam if it's able to get it off but Florian though on the other hand does have options to try to predict the fake out here and maybe switch in a Groudon for example so it's just going to be coming down to uh, which Pokemon Florian thinks Lazarus is going to try to aim for with the fake out there so they can go ahead and exert pressure whether that being sleep powder or meteor beam onto the landerus there as i think that is very crucial in trying to shut down and uh, gain more momentum because that is exactly what you want as we're just going to see the nihiligo actually go for protect yeah nihiligo not going to take any fake out damage here a great protect as well they're uh, gonna stay very healthy landerus goes Ooh. for a substitute which i love that move that is going to make it a very safe on here the leaf storm from the venusaur oh. landerus avoids the attack with its substitute what a crazy miss once again for lazarus's side that is so so huge uh, you're now allowing the landerus to not get affected by sleep powder thanks to that substitute that very very clutch uh, substitute there the leaf storm wasn't able to connect unfortunately for florian side which means yes the substitute is still up and available for lazarus to try to safeguard itself from there so right now lazarus has the potential of threatening the nihiligo with a raw ko there or just maybe deal a two hit ko onto the venusaur uh whilst maybe getting a pivot going for the incineral because the incineral is still threatened from that Nihiligo, as the Nihiligo should still naturally be faster, as we do see Lazarus opting for that thought and switching it out for an Eternatus. Yeah, Eternatus switches in here, though. Could still be subject to something like that Sleep Powder, but we don't mm. have the Groudon switching in. Nihiligo goes for a Meteor Beam, though. Have to hope once again that this doesn't miss. I know it yeah. can be Commentator's Curse, but I do have to say it. That Power Herb will boost the uh will boost that uh time make it only a one turn move and it will go for the meteor beam will connect thankfully should go into the eternatus slot here mm -hmm. which it does that is a, still a massive amount of damage the landerus comes back out from behind itself just to peek and get an earth power off onto the venusaur here well over three quarters of it, or just about three quarters of the damage here onto that venusaur venusaur goes for a leaf storm into the substitutes so that will break the substitute very easily but that landerus mm -hmm. is still you know still pretty free for the next turn we know that it's faster than this venusaur right now especially because that groudon is not in play well, exactly, and the Night Leader right now uh, will probably be slower than the Eternatus there. Um, uh, Florian recognizing that with the Night Leader, he wants to just try to go and put out as much offensive pressure as possible. He does have the speed uh, battles won, uh, excluding the Eternatus, of course. So now that the Landorus has its substitute gone, it is still susceptible to getting KO'd. Florian does have options on switching uh, Pokemons in, maybe either switching and getting a Groudon in for the following turn to exert pressure and going for that KO here. So I think Lazarus is going to probably have to try to go for more of a defensive play here uh, or even maybe try to go for a prediction. But it's quite tough because from one switch only, you've got a chlorophyll Venusaur that could be threatening with sleep powders as we do see the Landorus opt to go for the protect now. Yeah, no switches here either. And the Sludge Bomb from the Eternatus will go into the Venusaur slot. That will take mm. out that Venusaur. No more sleep powders, no more leaf storms. This puts the Nihiligo, you know, in a strong position to go for that power gem, but it does not hit the Landorus, and it makes Landorus sit so much more comfortably. Oh, definitely. That was a, lo a, a lovely protect right there. The Eternatus just said that it wants to go guarantee the KO onto the Venusaur. If it stays in, it will be able to remove that potential of the chlorophyll. Landorus, on the other hand, it's doing the right thing uh, to be honest it's protecting itself it knows it needs to be some sort of win con if possible if it can be paired next to any sort of incineral fake out pressure or even rillaboom in this case it could honestly threaten a lot because uh, you do have to factor in of course that uh, it still has quite enough uh, HP, although it is still highly threatened by both Pokemon on Florian's side of the field. So I would be expecting maybe a sort of switch up from Lazarus. Uh, maybe try to get... Uh, he has to time it, to be honest, the fake out pressure and which uh, Pokemon of the two come in. Because Florian just needs to try to get the reads right and try to instill so much pressure and damage. As he can, go ahead and pick up KOs either with Heat Crash onto the Landorus or go for that Precipice Blades, expecting the Groudon. The uh, sorry the incineral to actually switch in yeah even though that incineral switching in would be great to get that intimidate off and more fake out pressure you know either the incineral or the eternatus they're not going to love taking a precipice blades landers can still sit very comfortably here eternatus goes for its own meteor beam Ooh. once again powered up 
by that power herb either target here is not gonna love taking this but it should be going into one of these two pokemon probably i assume the nihiligo maybe just to get that power gem off of the field uh just to protect that lander is even more because the only option would be to heat crash and it does go into the nihiligo only once again does about half of the hp there nihiligo goes for that power gem into the lander slot this is so much damage gets that knockout Oof gonna get a beast boost to its special attack as well so putting it even more making it even more threatening on this field mm -hmm. and this leaves the groudon to go free for a rock slide which i didn't know that it was carrying so rock slide wow. groudon as well very interesting gets the knockout on that eternatus and shows that secret florian had with that rock slide you know you didn't realize that it had it you thought it might only be precipice blades and he crashed yeah, and I think, honestly, this is what we were talking about maybe before. I feel like if there was a Ditto right now, a Scarf Ditto, <laughs> it could be such a threat. It could honestly be outspeeding both the Nihiligo and the Groudon and just go and threaten uh, with the Prespa's Blades whilst having Fake Out Pressure on the side, maybe preferably an Incineral as it would have been able uh, to naturally check the Nihiligo. You just have to be a bit cautious of uh, your PP uh, available um, for the Prespa's Blades as long as it doesn't run out and you end up struggling. Whilst now in the current situation, uh, Florian has, is in the driver's seat, uh, to be honest. Even sh even though there are fake out, there's Fake Out Pressure from both the Incineral and the Rillaboom, you can easily go for a Double Protect or even a Switch Up as we we do see the Groudon switching now for the Incineroar. Yeah, that Incineroar gonna drop the attack of both of these Pokemon, which is absolutely huge. And then put Fake Out Pressure onto this Rillaboom in the next turn as well. This Rillaboom mm -hmm. with the Grassy Glide is probably gonna be the most uh, dangerous thing on the field here. Nihiligo goes for Protect though, also not gonna be taking any damage here. So if it is a target of any of these moves, it is gonna be very comfortable. The Fake Out from one Incineroar into the other here. Rillaboom's Grassy Glide into that Nihiligo, not gonna do any damage because of that Protect. And the Nihiligo is gonna gain a little bit of HP back as well. Uh, mm -hmm. as, as are the other Incineroar on the opponent's side from this grassy terrain. Yeah, and in this situation, I feel like Florian's just locked up the game right now. You've got the fake out pressure, so you could stop the Rillaboom from attacking right now, uh, which means the Nihiligo in turn, go ahead and threaten that Rillaboom. It is at plus two of its special attack. A, thanks to the Meteor Beam in previous turns, and B, because of the Beast Boost gained after picking up the KO onto the Landorus, as we do see the Incineroar on Florian's side flinch that Rillaboom with fake out. Yeah, the Nihiligo then goes for a Power Gem, actually. Nothing like a oh. Sludge Bomb here, and that Power Gem is enough to take that Incineroar out with that plus two special attack boost. It's just Nihiligo gets another actual special attack boost, bringing it to plus three. Uh, yeah. This Pokemon is absolutely threatening. You know, you have to hope... I mean, your game plan if you're Lazarus, right, you have to hope for uh, a Grassy Glide crit, probably, just to get that knockout, maybe, onto this Nihiligo, and then something from this Incineroar that doesn't... You know, maybe a Flare Blitz not doing as much damage as you would think. Uh, if this mm -hmm. Rillaboom is carrying something like an Assault Vest, you know, it might be able to live one of those turns and then not get burnt. Yeah, I mean, I still agree with Florian's play. It makes a lot of sense, uh, because right now, Incineroar just threatens with a Flare Blitz in the sun. Grass Glide, sure. It does pick up the... Oh, my lord, it doesn't even pick up the KO there. Due to that Intimidate, which means the Sludge Bomb at plus three from Nihilido is more than enough to pick up the KO and go ahead and give France that very, very valuable win. Yeah, I am sorry, Costa, that uh, Greece sadly didn't make it through this match, but it was still very yeah. fun to watch anyways. You and I both agree, I think, that that ditto would have been a really interesting mm. call game three. I think yep. it would have been a great play. You know, when you're playing against a Pokemon like Groudon, when you have these restricteds that have double target moves, if you can yep. get your ditto in front of them, you know, Xerneas and Kyogre and Groudon are all Pokemon that I really think of. You know, mm -hmm. in any of these Pokemon, if you get something like a Water Spout or a Geomancy uh, Dazzling Gleam or a Precipice Blades, even yeah. if you have a problem with missing maybe your Precipice Blades, you're still the faster of the two on the field, and there was no real speed control. No, there really wasn't, because that was the threatening thing about Florian's team. At least he had some sort of advantage with the Chlorophyll Venusaur, which was th honestly threatening so, so much. There was no speed control, like you mentioned, Maeve, on Lazarus' side. He opted not to bring the Suicune for a second time now in Game 3 in comparison to Game 1. And I feel like all of the momentum just swung out of his favor. The moment that he wasn't able to directly threaten and outspeed certain threats such as that Nihiligo, which absolutely ran away with this game for Florian. He was able to position it quite well, have fake out, necessary fake out pressure on the side, 
whilst also having the drought on, just going ahead and threatening, clicking buttons, uh, you know, like Precipice Blades, Heat Crash. We know how much damage this Pokemon could just deal on any opponent's side of the field. You need to try to highly threaten it as best as possible on your side of the field. And we just saw Florian was able to absolutely capitalize. So GG's to him and to Lazarus, of course. It was a close match. Very, very interesting one. And it's always a pleasure being able to see these trainers about it out. Yeah, absolutely. Again, very exciting to see. You know, I love these Groudon teams. I love seeing teams with Eternatus. Uh, not going to be able to, you know, see another one, I think, because I don't think our next game has a Ditto in it, which is very sad because I really would love to do a Ditto. But, um, you know, I think that's going to do it for us for this round. We will be taking a quick break and then we'll be back with our last round of the day.